Leak code is dead. It's been taken down by the most unlikely of foes, a simple college student named Chung and Roy Lee. Now, big tech companies are scrambling to figure out their next move. My name's Ahmad. In college, I landed six high paying software engineering internships and multiple six figure big tech offers, and I had to solve hundreds of LeetCode problems to get there. But now that LeetCode may be gone forever, I'm gonna tell you exactly what's gonna happen next and help you get ready for the coming change so you can land a six figure job in the future without LeetCode. But first, what the hell happened? If you didn't know, LeetCode is an online platform where you can practice standardized problems used during practical and technical assessments in software engineering interviews. It became extremely popular during the pandemic when companies started asking questions similar to LeetCode problems to assess problem solving skills remotely. This sent droves of potential candidates to the LeetCode platform to practice those problems. Now, during this time, remote work, computer science, and automation became extremely popular, which led to an advancement in the hiring process itself, and companies decided to start gamifying the process. LeetCode would literally give you points for problem solved and rank you against other candidates using the platform, which created a competitive and very game-like structure. Basically, LeetCode and big tech employers came together to commoditize the hiring process so that LeetCode could profit and tech companies would have a quick and efficient way to see if candidates were competent. But what happens when that efficiency becomes your downfall? What happens when you gamify the hiring process and someone comes along to gamify the application process? The system crumbles. Enter Chung and Roy Lee. You might have heard a little bit about Roy, He's the guy who killed LeetCode. Now, he was a 21-year-old software engineering student at Columbia University who was just kicked out for his crimes. But before that, he was simply a high school senior, doing what high school seniors do, worrying about what university they were going to get into. See, he applied to several of the top universities and was accepted into Harvard. However, Harvard did a little digging and discovered that Lee got a suspension when he stayed out after curfew on a class trip, which resulted in Harvard rescinding their acceptance. Lee was disappointed, but hoped that some of his other applications would come through, but that didn't happen. Word of his rescinded status got out, and almost every school he applied to denied him. After several rejections, he went into full-on panic mode, thinking his college dreams are over. So, he actually pivoted to the job market and decided to become proficient in LeetCode. He memorized multiple LeetCode problems in a day, spending over 600 hours on the website, and landing in the top 2% in LeetCode rankings. Needless to say, at this point, he was a LeetCode expert. You probably think he loved LeetCode. I mean, how would anybody solve over 600 problems and get in the top 2% without it? But it turns out he hated it. According to Roy, it felt like a complete waste of time. The problems he was memorizing didn't relate to coding in any real way. 600 hours of his life, gone. Poof and nothing to show for it. But fortunately, in an unexpected turn of events, Roy Lee was accepted into Columbia. Turns out, Columbia actually uses a different evaluation system that does not consider rescinded applications. And so in the fall of 2024, he started school in Columbia's engineering program. But memory of those LeetCode problems still left a bad taste in his mouth. And Roy decided to do something about it. Asking himself one point in question, what is the most viral thing I can do to get rid of LeetCode entirely? Well, what he came up with would change the industry forever. So what did he do? He built a weapon to take lead code down. See, Roy knew that he was never gonna graduate. He had no desire to. So when he got to Columbia, he approached the 50 smartest people he met and asked them if they wanted to start a company with him. And one guy said yes, his co-founder, Neil Sean Mago. Now, the two of them got to work building a program called Interview Coder, which is an undetectable AI tool that helps job candidates cheat on technical interviews, completely sidestepping lead code. They build a tool in all of 10 days and use the fall recruiting cycle to further develop and test the product during real interviews. Interview Coder, which Roy Lee describes as a simple Electron app with a React front end and Cerberus functions the back end, simply sits in the back of your computer, listens to the interview, and gives you answers to your coding problems. Which means that you never have to lift a finger to pass your technical interviews. The AI does it all for you. But building the tool wasn't enough to take Leeco down. He had to go viral. Lee ended up using Interview Coder in several interviews, getting job offers from TikTok, Google, Capital One, and Meta, just to name a few. But he turned them all down, revealing his ruse and telling them that he never had any intentions of taking those jobs. But then he reeled in the big fish, an interview with Amazon. Now, during this interview, Roy recorded himself using Interview Coder in a real life interview with Amazon, passing their lead code test with flying colors. He didn't stop there. He then uploaded the footage for the entire world to see. And I'm sure you can guess what happened next. 
That shit went incredibly viral. Next, he made Interview Coder available for download, cracking the gamification of the software engineering interview process and allowing tech job seekers far and wide to use this software to cheat on their job interviews and successfully land these jobs they may or may not be qualified for. Roy Lee was flying high. That is until Amazon got hold of his viral video. And as you can imagine, they were pissed. See, they couldn't tell anymore if their interviewees were just really passing their technical interviews or using interview coder to cheat. They had to put a stop to it and they had to do it fast. So what did they do next? They went after the college student, of course. Soon, an Amazon executive sent Columbia a letter demanding that they expel Roy Lee or they wouldn't hire any more of Columbia's graduates. That would be a crippling blow to Columbia. So the university caved and sent Roy Lee a notice. And for months, they battled it out in disciplinary hearings until they forced him to admit that his cheating tool could be used to cheat in CS classes, even though Lee claims it can't. And they put him on probation. To add insult to injury, Columbia demanded that Roy stay quiet. It's like they don't even know this guy at all. Of course that didn't work. He exposed them, putting the entire fiasco online and once again going viral, only making his interview coder platform all the more popular and ultimately getting himself expelled from school. And now the floodgates are open. Anyone who knows how to use AI can cheat on virtually every single part of the hiring process, meaning the days of virtual interviews are dead. More recently, Roy has dropped a video for a new tool called Cluely that allows you to cheat on virtually everything even your Tinder dates. It's obvious that the world is changing and the age of using AI to cheat is just the beginning. So why did Roy do this? Was he looking for bragging rights? Did he want to stick it to the man and burn it all down? Or did he want to make a boatload of money off of his AI cheating tools? Who cares? What matters is that the industry must now adapt and change to combat these cheating tools to make sure that they're hiring candidates who are actually right for the job. As job seekers, we have to make sure that we're changing with the times too, and I'm gonna show you how. While this might seem like a dramatic change, all of this was bound to happen sooner or later. See, Big Tech had been in for a reckoning, and what Roy Lee did exposed a fatal flaw in the software engineering hiring process. It's already insanely difficult to find really good talent, and companies are willing to pay top dollar for the right person. But because of these super high salaries, this only leads to cheating and exploiting a gamified system. If you set up a system where lying is rewarded, then people are going to lie. It's inevitable. It's just that simple. And in the end, you're gonna end up hiring people who can't do the job properly, accidentally. Now, what needs to happen is that the interview process itself needs to change. It must reflect the job requirements more accurately. The system must be ironclad, making cheating impossible. This is what big tech is going to do next. It's clear that when given the option to cheat, especially when there's a six-figure job on the line, most candidates are gonna do so. Companies need to eliminate any and all opportunities where cheating can occur. Essentially, anything that can be fully automated remotely with no supervision is out the window. See, LeetCode style interviews were optimized for engineers who were proficient in competitive mathematics, the math Olympiad types, those who thrived in a timed competitive environment. But just because you aren't good at math Olympiad doesn't mean that you're not gonna be a good engineer. And just because a computer generates a difficult problem doesn't mean it's a good method of judging someone. Companies now have to consider, one, what are they going to assess? And two, how are they actually going to assess it? Let's look at the current virtual software engineering job application process. It usually includes some, if not all of these steps. Number one, the resume and cover letter application. In this stage, a lot of candidates use AI to create these documents instead of writing about themselves in their own words. The take home test round, where candidates could enter given problems into an AI tool and get a perfect answer. The online test round, facilitated by testing tools like LeetCode and HackerRank. Now with Interview Coder, AI can solve these coding problems live in the interview while being completely undetectable. The face-to-face -face Zoom interview. Even in this scenario, candidates have been caught using AI to craft their responses to questions in real time and read them off a teleprompter. Now, candidates have to rethink their hiring process. But what may surprise you is that they won't be moving forward to find brand new methods of interviewing and hiring. What they're gonna do is they're gonna move backward to the tried and true interview structures that they abandoned along the way. Companies are gonna start testing your soft skills. Here are some examples. The first type of interview style that's gonna come back is in-person behavioral interviews. Data shows that a 30 minute in-person style interview makes a huge difference in selecting a more qualified candidate who's a better fit for the company. While AI can solve a math or coding problem, it can't speak in person and sound like a human, which is what these in-person interviews are assessing. Companies will now overvalue behavioral interviews. And that isn't all. The next interview style that will come back is the on-site interview, AKA trial weeks. See, back in the pre-COVID days, companies like Amazon and Shopify used to fly candidates out for an all expenses paid week-long on-site interview. Flights, hotel, food, everything was covered. 
Each day was packed with interviews from different departments, often lasting five to six hours. It was intense and candidates had to stay sharp the entire time. There were campus tours, group interviews, and whiteboard coding sessions done live in front of others. No AI, no shortcuts, just your brain, a marker, and a room full of people. Let's be honest, it's nearly impossible to cheat on a trial week, and that's why companies will be returning to that interview style soon. But there's a downside to this. Companies don't want to spend thousands of dollars on every candidate they might hire. They will if they have to, but they're going to look for ways to mitigate this kind of cost. What they're going to do is they're going to look for candidates in closer proximity to their offices. Candidates that won't have to fly in, be put in a hotel. If you live close to some of these places, you might stand a better chance of landing the interview. Now, the last soft skill that I know will be coming back, and potentially the most important one, will be networking. Companies will start overvaluing referrals because it's something that simply cannot be gamed. To network your way into knowing someone who is a great engineer and getting them to then believe that you're also a great engineer is extremely difficult. A referral cuts right through the bullshit of the interview process by providing a guaranteed real and strong candidate. This saves the recruiter time and money, putting you far ahead of everyone else in the hiring pool. This turn of events could actually be a great positive for you because with the death of LeetCode comes the birth of an opportunity. All you have to do is get yourself prepared for what's coming. Focus on learning soft interview skills. That means learning how to network properly and learning how to do an in-person style of interview. Skills like making eye contact, having a firm handshake, and speaking with confidence. Confidence. We're going back to the interpersonal skills that recruiters valued in the 80s. You're also going to need to learn how to make a good impression at a trial week interview because the interview starts the moment you set foot on site. You want to stay off your phone, make sure you're speaking casually and eloquently at lunch, and that you're personable and charming. People who are excellent communicators are going to stand out in this style of interview. Trust me, I've never been the best programmer of the bunch, but this is how I've landed almost all of the jobs and internships I've ever achieved. Now, if you want me to personally teach you all of these skills, so that you can be ready for the upcoming shift in the interview process, I wrote a school for motivated and dedicated computer science students and engineers called the Software Engineering Accelerator. While we do teach lead code, the best part about our system is that we teach you everything you need to succeed in a world without lead code by taking you through the nuts and bolts of referrals, behavioral interviews, and on-site interviews, all so you can land your dream offer fully guaranteed. So check out the top link in the description if that's something you're interested in pulling off this year. But will this change the industry for the better? That depends on who you are and how you look at it. Now, the consumers will always gain the most as the industry evolves and products become more efficient. The companies now may have to spend thousands on each candidate to fly them for in-person interviews, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing. The benefit to the company is decreasing the chance of a mishire, which would cost them money anyway. These companies are now going to have a better chance of finding the candidate that is the right fit, and these candidates tend to last longer at the company because they actually have the skills required to execute the role. For candidates who may have been good engineers but didn't excel at the lead style of interview, now you have the opportunity to excel where you couldn't make it before. So get prepared, perfect your soft skills, and check out the Software Engineering Accelerator by booking a call with our team today. Now, if your goal is to land a software engineer internship, feel free to watch this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.